And welcome back. I'm Mabel Jong. You're watching continuing coverage of the World Healthcare Congress happening here in Washington, D.C. I'm so pleased to have in the studio with me now Lillian Dietrich, who is VP Population Health at Highmark. Also, she works in provider analytics. Thank you so much for your time, Lillian. Absolutely. Well, you use models to predict the future. <laughs> <laughs> and it's, that seems like a very powerful tool. Tell me how it works in healthcare. Oh, it is, it is a very powerful tool. So some of the things that we try to accomplish with predictive models in healthcare is really understanding what risk level our patients are at so we know the appropriate programs to wrap around them so we're providing the right care in the right setting at the right time. Mm -hmm. And are we seeing that the people that are involved with this are also using that data correctly and in the best way. Um, yes, it's I. You know, we've we've come a long way, and we still have a ways to go. Um, w predictive analytics in healthcare is a little newer than in some of the other industries where it's more established. So we still. Um, have some challenges to get over for people really understanding that we're looking at our patients differently today. Um, in the past, we looked at historical claims information and usage mm -hmm. to really try to understand what was going on. Now we know we can predict and try to get in front of some of those before they become high risk. So that's a new way of thinking for people in healthcare. And so um, we, we are getting adoption and, and We'll keep working on that. We have a ways to go. And how is this working specifically in population health and their, and playing a role in the outcomes? Mm -hmm. in, um, in in a number of ways. So um, I have teams that support risk stratification, for example. So we're using those models to understand if we have a high risk, a uh, rising risk, or a low risk patient, so we know which kind of program to wrap around them. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we're starting to incorporate more consumer information along with that for predicting, as well as um, health insurers really partnering with our physician community to incorporate information that they write, for example, in the clinical notes or information around social determinants of health yes. um, that can really drive how those patients are seeking care and when they're seeking care. So an example of that would be um, a program that we're piloting with Lyft. So if we see that a patient has a transportation barrier in getting to an appointment, so we can now partner them with Lyft for non-emergency kind of visits to make sure that they're receiving their care. Because, you know, look, analyzing data, you realize there's a lot of time people end up in the emergency room or in the hospital because they didn't have a way to get to an appointment or get their medications or pay for their medications. So those are the social determinant of health kind of information that we're trying to do a better job of incorporating in our models to make sure, you know, we're even pairing our patients with community resources when needed. So in terms of the example you provided about Lyft, mm -hmm. how is it different what you're doing with, with them just going on an app and, and ordering Lyft themselves? So we're actually, you know, have a care manager, someone who's partnered with them to help them navigate that, the system and help and, and take in that information. Um, so one of our large health system partners, earlier this year we launched with them some social determinant of health assessment tools that's in their electronic medical record that's gathering the information if there's transportation barriers or financial barriers or um, just social support barriers at home. Mm -hmm. And so we are able then to, you know, put those pieces together for them and help them instead of them just trying on each of those things to go out and figure out how to get that support that they need or and they may not even realize is available. Okay. And so you're finding that health plans are really benefiting from from determining what these challenges are. Oh, absolutely. And, and they're seeing good results from that. I, absolutely. Most of our pilots are in an early stage, but you know, there's, um, you know, if someone can't get to an appointment or get their medication, we know 
that is going to impact their care in the future. You have an actuarial background. I do. I'm How a, is that mm -hmm. contributing to what yes, you're doing today? Yes, I'm a fellow in the Society of Actuaries, and I've spent time both on the health insurer side as well as the provider side. Um, and so my background has benefited me. Um, we are really looking at big data now. We have so much disparate data that we need to learn how to integrate and cleanse and um, do analysis on that my actuarial training really had an emphasis on how we look at that data and most importantly, how we um, determine the limitations of that data so we are drawing appropriate conclusions from that information. Okay, and Lillian, how are you finding the conference so far? It's wonderful. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's been, it's um, a lot of great topics, um, subject material here. All right, Lillian Dietrich, thank you so much for your time today. Yes, thank, you. thank you. And I'm Mabel Jong. We have many more interviews to come, so stay with us.